What's up everybody, hopefully you guys are doing good as always, my name is Itai and today I'm showing you a way where you can overcome the annoying 1d4 opening by white. If you want other openings, endgames and much more, then visit my brand new website at www.chessleague.org. Make sure you subscribe because it really helps out with the YouTube algorithm, so I really appreciate it and enjoy the video. I am of course talking about the Grunfeld opening, which stems from the King's Indian, but instead of Fian countering the bishop, you play d5. And the idea with the Grunfeld opening, and realistically any opening uh, faced with d4, c4, c3, is getting rid of this knight, because this knight, you know, is a huge piece for white. It controls the center, it helps these pawns be a little bit more important, um, and powerful, okay? So one of the lines is, well, the most common line is just trade, uh, trading the pawn. And then if white were to trade again, well, this would be a very big mistake because white's taken away one of the big knights. Uh, in general, one of the big pieces that it has in the center. So this will be very pleasant. You can fian with the bishop, castle, and you'll have a lot of control and, you know, all will be good. So instead, instead of, you know, trading the knight, white most likely will play a different move. So one of the options is this move, um, and I'll go over other options, but let's start with e4. And with the move e4, you're just going to take the knight, again, getting rid of a huge piece. And although white has, you know, now a lot of pieces, they're pretty meaning, you know, meaningless if they're not supported with minor, or, you know, or major pieces. And so these, these pawns, they usually will not end up being a huge problem for you because you're going to end up, you know, being able to get a lot of your pieces, your, your major pieces and minor pieces out a lot quicker than white will. Um, if you notice, you can already castle and white hasn't even developed their minor pieces on the king side uh, to be able to castle. Uh, so white will look to do that, sure, but still, you're just going to have a huge boost. Um, well, you're going to have a huge boost in, in, in development that the pieces in the center, the pawns in the center, are not going to be a huge deal. In fact, if I just go over and, and show you one of the more uh, intuitive lines that you, you, know, you could see, um, you'll notice that by, by playing moves like e5 and f5, you're questioning these pawns, and because they're not supported by, you know, minor or major pieces as, you know, as heavily as you, they're just going to be able to fall, and so the pawns in the center are not going to be a huge problem for you, uh, and you'll notice that, um, you know, th this will not end up working too well for, for white, uh, because you'll be able to, to just trade a lot in the center, and after all trades are done, there's going to be a pawn you can take. There's going to be rooks that you can put in the center. This knight is a little bit out of place right now, but you can always uh, put it in a nice spot supported by a pawn. And overall, you're going to be in a very pleasant position. Let's move on to a different response after the knight takes that you might see, which is bishop over here to d2. So after the lines that we already talked about occur and the pawns in the center are traded, instead of taking the knight and instead of the move e4, you might see d2. And the idea with d2 is to just develop your piece. It's not a very aggressive uh, aggressive move. It's not kicking away your knight. It's not threatening anything. It's just a developing move. And so you can just develop as well, get ready to castle, and it you know the move d2 should not be through, uh, too harming on you. Um, then you might go into a similar line that we saw. You might see, um, you know, a, a delayed e4, and after you take, then instead of the pawn taking, now the bishop can take. But overall, once again, you're going to have that huge boost in development. I mean, you can already castle right now, so, you, you know, these pawns in the center are not going to be a huge deal. And so with the move d2, just fianchetto, just castle, and just start getting minor and major pieces out there, and, you know, getting ready for the pawn breaks that you're going to eventually play later on. If we take a step back, of course white does not have to take this pawn. You might see this move, which is more commonly uh, associated with f3, but it's still very viable here. And I'll explain what white is looking to do with this bishop here, um, because this is a very aggressive move. But let's say that you have fianchetto the bishop, um, and then white obviously now can close off this gap here because the bishop has already been developed. We'll now notice that this pawn is attacked. And so if you were to castle, for example, well, white could now uh, make your queen, you know, force your queen out of this location, which would then just lose you a pawn. So that's kind of the idea uh, with the move f4. And a lot of times, like in the London system, for example, where the, the bishop ends up being on f4, this pawn is attacked and it's a big threat. Um, so a lot of times, 
um, white looks to, to put the bishop here and attack this pawn. So instead of castling, what you could try to do is playing a, a c5. And now the bishop is obviously no longer targeting the c pawn, um, and so you're free to castle uh, you know, in the next moves. But the idea is that you're taking away the pawn center that white has. And instead of taking away uh, the pawn center with e5 and f5, which would usually happen in this opening, um, you're going to be trying to take it away with c5, which is a little bit weird for the Grunfeld, but it is still um, a, a possibility if this line occurs um, with f4. And so now, for example, let's say white takes, uh, you can develop your, your, your queen here. And now, eventually, you're going to be able to win back the pawn, and this is a, a, a pretty pleasant position. Now you can obviously castle, um, and all will be well for you here, because you still have these pawns that could eventually be pushed forward and be take you know take control of the center. Um, along with that, you also have this pawn. So overall, this is a pretty pleasant position for you. That's the video I have for you today about the Grunfeld defense. Hopefully you enjoyed, but before you leave, I do have a question for you. When you're faced against d4, what is the response that you usually tend to play? Do you like playing d5? Maybe you like trying to play the King's Indian, but generally speaking, against d4, what do you like to play? Personally, for me, I like playing d5. Make sure you leave that in the comment section below. Also, make sure you subscribe so you never miss my video, and it also, once again, really helps with the YouTube algorithm. Check out my brand new website at www www.chesskick.org. Thank you guys so much for watching. Hopefully you enjoyed, and I'll see you guys next time. Peace out.